What's happening everyone and welcome back to another TV box review. It's been a while since we have heard from the old winner chipset and today they have re-emerged in an all new TV box called the X98H Pro. This model runs on the latest Android 12 operating system on the all new all winner H618 quad core CPU on 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage. There is also a 4GB 128GB model. So in this review, let's see what this new all winner chipset has to offer and what improvements they have made if any. So don't go anywhere, that's up next. And welcome back. In the box you have your standard TV box contents consisting of the TV box itself, one infrared remote, one HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter and your user manual. So the box has an all plastic design with a honeycomb pattern and the product branding to the top. For input output, it has one HDMI input, one HDMI output, one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio, one USB 2.0 port, one auxiliary port, an HD switch button and its DC power socket. To the side it has two more USB 2.0 ports and a micro SD card reader. On the opposite side you have ventilation holes. To the front it has an LED display. And below it has four anti-skid rubber feet with no ventilation holes. So upon startup you have an X98 animation for a couple of seconds then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this is the launcher and upon connecting to your internet network, you are prompted with a firmware update. So I'll complete the update and continue. So I'm back and this launcher is called the Media Box Launcher. It comes with these standard main icons and a shortcuts bar. It does not have a navigation bar or status bar. I will, however, install the menu button and navigation bar as an alternative in just a moment. So in the settings area, it shows that this firmware was built on the Android 12 SDK and here is its firmware build information. It features 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz. You get HDR display and HLG HDR display. You also have the option to set it to Auto HDR which makes it compatible with both HDR and non-HDR TVs. It has built-in screen rotation to portrait mode, reverse portrait and reverse landscape. However, in order for it to work, you must first disable forced landscape option and restart the box to enable it. Enabling forced landscape ensures that stubborn apps such as APKPO works in landscape mode. I know there are some users that will really appreciate this feature. There is a section under display where you can select to manually disable certain display formats. In this section also shows that the box does not have Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus formats available. It has HDR10 and HLG. It has auto frame rate switching. For audio, you have the option to enable audio pass through and under advanced options, you can auto select or manually select which surround sound formats you would like to enable. Under inputs, you have HDMI CEC options and it comes in 54 various languages. There is no root switch power key definition options or built-in hardware monitor feature. For pre-installed apps, these are what it comes with. I've already logged into my Google account without issues and you have full access to the Google Play Store without any weird restrictions. So let's now take a look at its system and hardware information. So the manufacturer of this chipset is all winner and it comes with 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 32GB of internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Under CPU, 
To the top here, it shows that the model is all winner H313 or H616. And I know the product description says that it's an H618. So I did a physical inspection of its CPU. And here it shows that the model is all winner H618. So that information here is incorrect. So it's a quad-core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Now its low CPU clock speed is a characteristic of all winner chipsets to prevent overheating. So right away we know what to expect. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 GPU with OpenGL version 3.2 support. Its Wi-Fi adapter is a dual band 2.4 GHz plus 5 GHz model. Its operating system is Android 12 internally codenamed Snow Cone Edition and it shows that the box is rooted. On the devices, it shows that it has Vulkan support API version 1.1. Under temperature, and this is where the clocking of its CPU at 1.4 GHz comes into play. At 1.4 GHz, its idle temperature is around 69 degrees Celsius. If they clocked it any higher, its idle temperature would be overheating. And under Codex, it comes with all the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos. However, there are no Dolby or DTS audio decoders. So one can only hope that the box allows surround sound audio decoding to take place at the software level. And that's the specs of this new all-winner H618 SoC. For Google certification, it's not fully Google certified with only Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. Also, for root access, it shows that the box is rooted. So this box is not equipped with the required version of Android, nor does it have the digital rights or protection to play subscription services in HD or 4K. For watching YouTube videos, it comes with the Android TV version and you can also install the mobile version from the Play Store. However, it plays best at 1440p resolution and you don't get HDR. When set to 4K 2160p, it freezes. For mobile screen mirroring, it comes with a Miracast receiver app. However, it does not work, so you will have to resort to using the AirScreen app. For customizing your launcher and navigation features, here I installed the menu button alternative navigation bar. However, the recent apps feature is not working. I also installed the ADW Launcher 2 alternative launcher and you have long click menu pop-ups and drag and drop shortcuts. It also allows you to install custom wallpapers and live wallpapers. So I'll now play my list of 4K HDR videos and I'm looking for HDR display, HLG HDR display and AV1 video decoding. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head to head goal difference.
So from this test, the box can play 4K HDR videos only. It cannot play HLG, HDR and AV1 videos. So we already saw that it does not have any Dolby or DTS surround sound audio decoders. So I'll now test to see if we can achieve these formats using software decoders from the media player. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of a scene. captures the full extent <laughs> of nature's fury. So using software decoders, I got a Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus and a DTS Neural X. You don't get a DTS HD Master Audio, DTS X, Dolby Surround or Dolby True HD. So I connected my gamepad via Bluetooth and the connection is stable and here I'm using it to play some Android games. Now gaming on this box is somewhat interesting because I was expecting the graphics to be slow and lacking quality. I was also expecting it to overheat way above 90 degrees celsius. Surprisingly, on medium graphics settings, the gameplay is smooth and its temperature remained in the high 80s. So at 1.4 GHz, it's not too bad. <laughs> And to conclude this review, let's take a look at its benchmarks and where it places on my chart. First, in its RAM copy and internal storage read and write speed test. It shows that it has a RAM copy speed of 2779 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 189 megabytes per second and a write speed of 45 megabytes per second. In testing the speed of its Wi-Fi bands and Ethernet LAN port based on my network speed of 154 megabits per second, only the Ethernet LAN port achieved maximum speed, so its LAN port is a gigabit LAN port. The 5 GHz band could only muster 94% and the 2.4 GHz band could only achieve 32%. In the Geekbench 5 CPU single core and multi core speed test, it scored 107 single core and 381 multi core. In its graphics rendering and speed test, it scored 126 in the Wild Life test with Vulkan support and 271 in the Slingshot test. And in the Antutu benchmark, it scored 71,896. So when I entered the scores on my rankings chart, the X98H Pro is currently at position 74 based on its Antutu performance benchmark and it received a 3 out of 5 star rating. If you would like to view this chart, you can do so on my blog where you can compare various benchmarks and features and I also provided a price comparison page with coupons for this box right here. See the link in the description below this video. In summary. With the release of this new all-winner chipset, there isn't much of a difference in performance from its previous models. They have tried to improve the overheating situation by limiting the CPU clock speed, but it still results in some borderline overheating. Overall, I would say it's better than all of their previous models and it works great to stream movies and TV shows from Kodi and streaming APKs. It's not a certified model, so don't look for subscription services in HD and 4K. And keep in mind that it does not come with any surround sound audio recorders at the hardware level. 
One thing they left out in this firmware is an app to utilize the HDMI input port for recording. So friends, that brings to an end of this review. If you are interested in this model, it's currently available for only $39.99 using the link in the description. And if you would like more buying options, you can check out the price comparison page. So thanks for watching and to support this channel, give this video the thumbs up as it helps with the ratings. And if this is the first time you're viewing one of my videos, then be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell before leaving to be notified each time I release a new video or decide to do a giveaway. Stay tuned and see you in the next one.